It's time for Jamari Jones to be the full-time starter for Mississippi Valley State. I think week four is a very important week, and I'm going to tell you why on multiple fronts. And we have three games that are very important, but didn't quite crack the cut for our game of the week. Oh, yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. The Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every single day. Thank you for that. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. It just means to go ahead and look at that third on the bottom of our screen that says my Twitter name and follow me right there at South Exclusives. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online, who has you covered this season with more odds, props, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And it's Jamari Jones' time, full time in Mississippi Valley State. Come on, guys. It's time to make that official change. I don't believe that Dancy has acknowledged that it's going to be Jamari Jones at this point. I haven't seen anything on that yet, but it's time. It is genuinely time. And in my opinion, it was time from week one. I think that he should have been the week one, day one starter. There's, of course, should have been could have been some things that I might not have been privy to such as just how he was performing, maybe grasping the playbook, things of that nature. But right now, Mississippi Valley State sits at 0-3 on the season. And they just lost a game that might be the toughest of them all to swallow because it might have been the easiest of them all. And they just lost a game to Delta State from the D2 ranks. Now, this is my personal opinion. If you're going down a division, I do not feel like those teams should beat you. There's a select few, the, the top notch, the upper echelon. But for the most part, I don't want to lose to a division that's lower than me, right? Of course, Albany State can give people runs for their money. Bowie State can give people runs for their money in the, in the past couple of years. I think Virginia Union looks like they could give some people some run for their money. However, for the most part, I'm not really trying to lose to a D2 school. That, that's not something that I'm trying to do. Right, I don't want to lose any game, but specifically those, I feel like those are games that I'm supposed to win. They lost to a D2 school. And at that point, you're sitting here thinking like, all right, is this just another one of those years for Mississippi Valley? I felt as if there's a lot of hype around the team. However, through the first three games, they have not substantiated that kind of hype. They have not substantiated the kind of, of confidence and belief that certain people have in them. Right. So with that being the case, I thought Jamari Jones was going to be the day one starter, but they decided to go with Jelani Eason and through two weeks. No Jelani Eason. Now, mind you, I mean, excuse me, no Jamari Jones. Now, mind you, you didn't bring a guy of his status from the Juco ranks, not not as a freshman. You didn't bring this guy in as a Juco transfer to ride the bench. I, I just don't believe that to be the case. So I'm thinking, okay, Eason must have had a really good summer or something, right? Must have had a really good fall camp, something. But we're two weeks into the season. We're calling back a little bit. I know we're three now, but we're two weeks through the season, and I've still seen no Jamari Jones. And it's not as if it, it's not as excuse me, it's not as if Eason was just blowing the doors off or something, right? So it's not as if he's just shutting things down and keeping Eason off the field with his play. So I'm like, what's going on? Why am I not seeing Easton? They get blown out by Austin P. And in that game against Austin P, you go ahead and bring in TJ Goodwin. Now that's really got me scratching my head. Because at this point, I'm saying, you put the backup in, but the backup's not Jamari Jones. Is he not grasping the playbook? What's what's going on? Right? Hit my wind horse meme. There's something strange going on in Mississippi Valley. So 
I'm thinking like, man, when, when is he when is he going to get in? Because I do feel like he's going to play at some point this year. So when? Fast forward to the press conference and Coach Dancy says, we're just not playing well at that position, meaning the quarterback position. And he said they'll possibly look at using multiple quarterbacks versus Delta State. Now let's get to present day. Delta State comes. TJ Goodwin starts. All right, so he didn't just get in as, okay, they're getting blown out. No, there's legitimate concern about who the quarterback's going to be. But TJ Goodwin gets to start. He throws all the two passes, completes none of them, one drive, he's out of there. You go right back to Jelani Eason. Another uninspiring performance, right? And then in about the second quarter, you throw in Jamari Jones. It takes him two drives to kind of get his legs underneath him. Those first two drives were not good. After that, they were rolling. Every single drive, except for the last drive of the game, which ended with the end of the game, so that ended with triple zeros on the clock, you had yourself in scoring position. Either you made a field goal, you scored a touchdown, or you attempted a field goal. And that's what you want to see from your quarterback. I understand that I always say I want to beat these D2, uh, these beat these D2 teams. I understand that I say these are the teams you have to beat. But at the same time, this is the first time I've ever seen Jamari Jones suit up for the Delta Devils. Like, this is the first time I've seen it. So, I got to pull something. I can't pull against him facing the UAPB. I can't pull from him facing a, an Alabama state. I can't pull those type of experiences. So all I can do is go off of what I was able to see. And this is the first time the offense really got going. There are so many things. You just look at the stats. He's already done better than Jelani Eason. And I don't mean to just, you know, just bash on Jelani Eason. I'm just saying I felt as if Jones should have been the quarterback from the beginning. And I think that he substantiated that in the first game. You look at Easton's first two performances, they barely combine to be more than 100 yards, right? He's, he's around 130 on the year. In one game, in basically three quarters, Jamari Jones is already at 180. He had the first touchdown through the air, not only in this game, but in the season period for Valley. So I'm looking at things. He's getting the offense going. The, the quarterback rating, so much better. The, the uh, yards per... Uh, uh, completion so much better the offense looks like it's actually going and I understand this went against you know lesser competition but he wasn't Easton wasn't getting them going against that lesser competition to me it's been time for this and what just happened in today's or I guess Saturday's game just kind of confirmed that for me it's time to see Jamari Jones he is one of the top Juco quarterbacks when he came to you and now it's time for us to see what he can do now that he's with you. It's that simple. And going forward in the future, this is Jamari Jones' team. That's just my two cents on it, and that's how I think that it should be. Going forward, I want to tell you about why week four is such an important week. I think it's a, a week that is full of decision-making and adds a little bit of decisiveness to how we talk about each one of these teams. Before we get into that, however, I want to tell you about Nugenics. And listen, I'm a young guy, but every time... I feel like my body just ain't moving like it did when I was 16 years old, right? I still got a little bit of pep in my step, but I can feel it kind of dissipating. Nobody wants that, right? You know, as we get older, we produce less testosterone as, as men, period. It happens as natural, but you want to get that swagger back. You really want to get back into the groove. The nugenics is the thing for you. If you want more energy to counter the negative physical effects of aging, Nugenics Total T Testosterone Booster with Testofen is what you need. It's just that simple. It helps you turn back the clock, re-energize your workouts, get better results in the gym, help you look and feel like the man that you really want to be, the man that you feel like you used to be. Definitely dial back the clock and get that. So, Nugenics Total T is the number one selling testosterone booster at GMC. You also see this can help re-energize your life, help you get back into powerful, confident, good-looking warrior mode that you used to be in, and just go to the gym and feel more productive if you want to lose the weight, you want to get in better shape, and you just want to work out harder. This is exactly what you need. Now, you can get a compl complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total T when you text college to 231-231 text now and get a bottle of nugenics thermo their most powerful fat incinerator after with the key ingredients to help you get back in shape fast absolutely free that's text college to 231-231 text college to 231-231 
As we keep on rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day every day truly and today's word of the day is perspicacious Ooh, pers- perspicacious <laughs> i'm trying to say ooh, like i just dropped it perspicacious um but today's word of the day is perspicacious let's go ahead and roll with it right and that means able to understand things that are difficult or not obvious let's see if i get that out a little bit smoother when we're going through today's episode but i want to tell you why week four is so important to me And it's all about decisiveness. It's all about decision-making and the ability to really analyze a team. But let's talk about this from a media standpoint. And let's also talk about this from a coach slash, I guess, kind of player standpoint as well, but mostly on the coaching front. As a media member, I'm talking about teams all the time. I'm here talking about teams on a daily basis on this show. I'm here talking about my saints on a daily basis, right? For me, I try to act like I'm on camera at all times. So I got to make sure that everything I say is factual, I believe in, I can back up what I'm saying. And this is where this comes into play. Because for most HBCUs, those money games are done. For the most part, you're not going to see them anymore. You're going to be able to see actual games where you can tell who they are. Right, I think about four weeks into the season, you are not who you're going to be at the end of the year because you're ever-changing. However, you kind of are who you are. At that point, you are who you are. If you have discipline issues, you're an undisciplined team. You've shown yourself to have certain habits. The excuses start to wear off. You know, you're four games into the season. I feel like I can genuinely tell who you are. Most HBCUs don't have a strong first three games right they don't have a strong out of conference schedule to show who you really are they play these money games so to speak right let's put the air quotes on it still but for the most part you got to dig a little too deep for the casual eyes like okay this is you're getting blown out then you're not really a get blown out team you won't be during the year because you're going to start facing teams that are on your level right jackson state's not one of them all corn's not one of them um north carolina central isn't one of them I feel like those three teams, just off the top of my head, head have some really good out-of-conference schedules that allow you to see who they are. Prairie View kind of had one as well because they had uh, Incarnate Word and Abilene Christian. So they got some solid games that let you know. And, and I mentioned Jackson State. To my Jackson State fans, I love y'all, but I'm a, there's a section of you guys. There's a section of you guys that are too defensive. To, ready to ready to be ready to defend your team when nobody's attacking you like Monday when we talked about scheduling I understand Jackson State and scheduling is a little bit of a sensitive issue for a lot of people but just take a step back you don't I'm not attacking I promise you I speak on here glowingly 95% of the time of Jackson State Deion Sanders Travis Hunter Shador Sanders Aubrey Miller right I, I sit here and I speak glowingly of these players and, and the coaches, the 5% that I'm critical, I promise you I'm not attacking. I promise you. So don't think you have to defend your team. But I appreciate your passion. But you don't have to defend your team. I'm, I promise you I'm not attacking them. You'll know. You will know because it won't be passive, right, if I'm really attacking. Ask Grambling when I talked about their undisciplined penalties after week one. That's an attack. Anywho, 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 let's get back to it because – I thought those four teams had some pretty good out-of-conference games that allow me to make real opinions on what they are. You know, Texas Southern had a couple of games that were in conference at the beginning of the season. They're a little bit of an exception. But for the most part, because two out of their first three games were conference games. So they really allowed me to make an opinion on them because they are facing opponents that they'll face on a regular basis. But now I get to get to that, that point where oh, I know you run the ball well, or I know that you struggle blocking. And there's so many games at one time. There's there's not a lot of coverage. Not all the games are readily available, right? So there's so many things that go into needing multiple weeks to really see what's a trend, what's a one-off, what's some things that they're starting to get better on, maybe some focus. It's just so much. And when we get to week four, I feel like I can concretely talk about what these teams are and that's why i appreciate it and from a coaching perspective i think you know who your team is 
in rec- in the in a training camp, but then you get into the regular season, you actually want to see who they are when they're battle tested. And it probably doesn't take four weeks because as a coach, you're supposed to be perspicacious, right? Yeah, I did it. I, I did it. I didn't even have to stutter over it. But as a coach, you're supposed to have that that ability to look at what your team is going to be in the long run early. That's part of just what you have to do. So I'm not a coach. I'm not good at that. I need some more time to really see what this team is going to be. But then you look at for the SWAC, it's even more important because now you're getting into conference play. Most teams in the SWAC haven't played a conference game. Jackson State played FAMU and vice versa. Texas Southern plays Prairie View and vice versa. And then Southern and vice versa. TSU is the only team in the SWAC that has two games in their conference belt. Everybody else has either one or none, and most of them have none. So you're looking at a conference where now they don't, the MEAC doesn't have as many teams, so they still have a couple of out-of-conference games to take care of, right? However, in the SWAC, now not only are you kind of knowing who your team is, now there's a sense of urgency that every game is super important because you're in conference play. You're in conference play now. So let's go ahead and no more games, no more, oh, we can shrug that one off. No, you lose, there's some ramifications. You start losing two in a row, it's going to be real difficult to win your division to get to that conference championship. For example, if Jackson State dominates everybody in their out-of-conference schedule, but then they might slip up one or two times, they might not be able to win the SWAC like we think they were, like I think they are, personally. You know, you think Grambling, I've seen somebody say that Grambling versus Jackson State is going to be seen again. If Grambling slips up a couple of times, they might not be able to do it. I think that West is going to be a murderous row. But overall, that's just what we're looking at. And it's an it's a an exaggerated level of importance once you get into conference play because those games are what actually matter. You lose all your conference games, it doesn't matter. You are you it doesn't matter how good your your first three games were, you're done. You know, you win all your or you lose all your out of conference games and go seven and oh, eight and oh in the conference. Well, you're looking at a swag championship. It's just that simple. And going forward, I want to talk about a couple of the games in week four that I think we need to look out for, but they didn't quite crack the cut for our game of the week. However, before we get into that, let me tell you about Bet Online because Bet Online is the number one place for all of your sports wagering needs. Listen, you want the best odds, you want the best props, you want the best lines, then you need to go to Bet Online. If you want to have versatile covers, the ability to put money down on a multitude of different things, you need to go to Bet Online. I'm talking combat sports, esports, football, could be right in the thick of it, right? We're in football season. If we're talking about basketball that's on the horizon, you need to put some money down on that. Go to Bet Online. I tell all of my friends there's no other place that I would put my money down other than Bet Online because I can get all the news, right? I can make sure that they know. Well, they're going to make sure that I know exactly what I'm putting my money down on. And that's what I appreciate appreciate about them, in addition to being the fastest and easiest. Where the wage on all of your favorite sports, bet online, where the game starts. As we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you guys, man, rolling all the way through the episode. Much love to you. Thank you. I don't always tell you thank you at the beginning of this segment but I want to make sure that I do occasionally because I appreciate my people who are here through the whole thing. And let's get into some of the games that we need to watch out for in this week's schedule. And number one, I'm going to go with Bowie State versus St. Augustine. And this is just kind of a continuation of something that we talked about earlier in the week, and that is the fact that Bowie State has lost the conference game for the first time in three years. Well, they need to make sure that they don't lose another one if they still want to win the CIAA. It's that simple. You ain't going to win the CIAA if you do not. I don't know if you're going to lose another one. I don't think you're going to win that side. Union doesn't look like they're prepped to lose two conference games. They don't. Shaw just knocks you off. You're going to need the tiebreaker over Shaw. So you're going to need them to lose two. If you lose two, you're going to need them to lose three. It's not likely. There's a sense of urgency after every single game, and to me, this is a bit of a get-back game. This is a little bit of a, a get-right game. St. Aug hasn't really made much noise this year. They lost all of their games by basically blowouts. This is kind of a get-right game. you got to understand, when, when it comes to Bowie State, the record is not good. You know, you've lost the out-of-conference game before. That's whatever. But you lose a conference game, now the pressure's on, especially when you do it so early. 
but you got the second leader, uh, second leading passer in the in the in the conference. You got a defense that held Shaw to only 17, so you know they can play defense. You just gotta finish. You gotta finish. You gotta finish. You gotta finish. Like you have to make sure that you are at the end of your drives ending with points. You know, somebody said every single drive has to end with a kick, whether that's a field goal or a touchdown, an extra point, right? So that's the mission. That is the mission that you want to make sure you are setting. And this is kind of a get right. I think you got to go for it. Hampton versus Delaware is a game that, you know, honestly almost got game of the week status. These next two games really almost got game of the week status, but I had one that I was just even more interested in than those two. But when you look at what they were able to do in the first three games, them being Hampton, you got to be impressed. You got to be curious what they're going to do going into CAA play. And they start off with a game that's not easy. They should lose. I'm going to be honest with you. Everything points to them losing. And that's one of the reasons they didn't get a uh, game of the week cut this year or this week. But Delaware is the number eight team in the nation. They should be the, the favorites in this matchup. Hampton, for as good as their start was, is projected to be the last place team in the CAA. But they probably also didn't expect for Hampton to be this good in their out-of-conference schedule. So now we're going to see them go into the CAA for the first time, something they've been wanting to do forever, forever, ever. Like, I mean, like Andre 3000 forever, ever. Like, this is something that the former, I believe, president wanted to do years ago. So they're finally getting it done, and the president is leaving. However, now you got to go against this competition. And with this, you're going to have the number five rated FCS quarterback in Nolan Richardson. This team went to Navy. They knocked them off. Like I said, they are a top 10 team in the country. And that's who you're going to have to face off in your first game. And listen, this is, this is getting baptized by fire. If Hampton goes in and they win this game, I'm telling you right now, they are a really, 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 really good team. Really good team. Because you don't just knock off Delaware. It's not an easy game by far. They lose this game. I don't know what it means for them. I don't think it means, oh, they're going to fail in the CAA because they lost to the number eight team in the nation. You know, that's like, that's like Kentucky going up against Georgia in week one. And because they lost to the best team in the SEC, all of a sudden, they trash. No, it doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. So... That's the game that we're watching out for. And then PV versus Alabama State. I think that PV, they had, they, they've had an interesting run. Alabama State's looked really good. Um, I want to see D. Davis back. I want to see Trazon Conley, who's nursing an ankle injury and is why he's missed the last game of the of, against Incarnate Word. I've seen an article say that Alabama State just needs to stop the run because Prairie View is only averaging 100 yards per game. Well, C.J. Dumas, if he's out there, maybe, he has to prove that he can pass. But Trazon Conley can throw the rock. I've seen it. I saw it against Abilene, Abilene Christian. Let's remember, they didn't complete a pass versus TSU. They have zero yards through the air. That's going to bring your, your total down. But you only attempted six uh, passes. So it's not like you threw 20 times and only had zero yards. You only attempted six passes. So that really tells you why the yards are at a low number. That's what it, it kind of makes sense. If Alabama State goes in there and just prepares for the run and Trazon Conley is there, they're liable to lose. But you have Prairie View is first in the SWAC West because they have a, a division and a, a conference victory over TSU. TSU is one and one, but their their last one right they lost is to prairie view so it's kind of null and void at that point however you look at them they're the top in the swac west alabama state is one of only three teams in the swac with a winning record they're two and one right now with their only loss being to ucla they're the only team that has a winning record in the swac east outside of jackson state the only team and they knocked off a uh a Howard School, who hasn't looked too great at the beginning of the season. However, that was a really good game, and D. Davis looked phenomenal. Hopefully both of these quarterbacks can come back from their injury. Conley with an ankle, um, Davis with a shoulder. I feel very confident that Davis is going to play. We'll see about Conley. But this has the makings of being a really good game. It just not have enough for me to put it over North Carolina a and versus South Carolina State, which is going to be our game of the week. So... 
I appreciate you for being uh, making us your first listen of the day every day. Tomorrow, come through and check out our game of the week where we break down the Aggies versus the Bulldogs. Now, make sure you're checking out our conference shows for your second listen of the day, Locked on ACC, Locked on Big 12, and all of the gang at the Locked on Podcast Network. And in the meantime, in between time, if you're looking for me, you can find me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care, stay blessed. Peace.